Preface. In this video, I'm going to be talking about human beings. So it's important to note that when I call somebody a jackass or a dipshit or I think twat waffle comes up, I am not labeling a human. My research has not reached their core that exists beyond judgment. I'm only addressing the douchey behavior that they are exhibiting within the context of my point. It's not my fault that the English language isn't nuanced enough to differentiate between the person who sees and the person who is seen. So bite me. Brief overview, Teal Swan is a very controversial spiritual teacher who suffered brutal satanic cult ritual abuse from ages 6 to 19. He took my throat, pushed me up against the side of the building and said, I'm your real father and your mother is a whore and if you say anything about the fact that we have talked to each other, your whole entire family's gonna die. Isn't that normal? So how did this fine citizen enter Teal's life? He was a veterinarian, so he worked with the horses that I was taking lessons on. We trusted somebody and his wife that we shouldn't have trusted, and that's a cautionary tale for everyone, that it can happen right under your nose and you don't know it. I was going back and forth between my parents and him. And the stuff this guy put her through? Unfathomable. He threw me down on the floor and then he stepped on both of my arms and ended up hairline fracturing them. It was common for him not to let me do normal things like sleep in beds. He actually killed my dog. His favorite things to do is to chase me through the woods. He used to prostitute me when I was younger. When I watched him kill boys, he would have the boys kiss me, almost like he was getting off. He'd do whatever the hell he wanted to, rape or have me perform fellatio. There's so many details. You're going over 13 years of really horrific shit. During Teal's abuse, she had an epiphany, which she describes here. For a moment, I drowned in the misery of heavy anguish. It felt like I was being crushed, bruised, and broken. I took a breath. Instead of pulling away from it, I went deeper. I gave the feeling permission to consume me. I allowed it as if it had a valid reason to be there. And soon, like sun rays penetrating the depths of the ocean, I experienced a lightness of being. I felt relief. The fear of the feeling itself was evaporated by my choice to dive into the feeling instead. If it sounds a little dark to you, I promise it makes sense. It's not as negative as it sounds. The core idea is to release your resistance to what is, even if it's pain. Especially if it's pain. You can't deal with despair that you don't acknowledge. So if you start to feel doubt and you say, oh gosh, doubt is not okay, which is the reason this is causing you pain, doubt is not okay, it's the argument with reality that's causing the pain. You know that feeling when you're venting to a friend and they won't just listen to you? That's the pain you're inflicting on your own consciousness. When you suppress or deny your feelings, you're rejecting yourself. The true pain in this situation is not about the fact that you don't have the confidence. It's about the fact that you have not given yourself permission to feel a lack of confidence. It's that you've made that wrong. Harmless enough, right? So why do people hate her so, 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 so much? She's made some extraordinary claims. She claims to have extrasensory perception. I was born with clairsentience, clair audience, clair cognizance. Clairvoyance. There's a bunch of even weirder stuff that she's quoted as saying, but I can't find any clips of her actually saying them. But don't get me wrong, I would love to. If you guys have those links, send them my way. She can see into the future, perceive beings in spiritual realms, travel out of her body, and read people's minds. Before she was born, she was designed by an entire panel of six-dimensional Arcturian beings because people like to pay attention to what's attractive. She says she's not limited to this dimension or time, space, reality. She's a spirit being which has projected forth into an Arcturian being which has projected forth into a human being. She's also said that she is a reincarnation of an Indian guru. I hear her hair is insured for $10,000. But I do have one clip that is her herself speaking. And it is definitely my favorite. This, this is a treasure. I'm watching the blood going through your veins. I'm watching the way your heart's pumping. I'm watching the digestive system. I can see your bones. If I zoom in, I can look at specific genetics if you'd like me to. You're dehydrated. I can see that your cells are not doing what they need to do in terms of taking nutrients in and out. You tell me like what I ate this morning. You ate wheat. Can I tell you why I know that? Because it's causing an inflammation in your intestines. Really, Teal? Really? Come the fuck on. That's my limit with Teal Swan. I hit this limit. It's like a teal ceiling. I'm gonna call it my tealing. This ability could be verified in a controlled setting. This woman said she could smell disease, which also sounds insane, but they verified it. So, because Teal says this out there shit, it's concerning to a lot of people that she has influence over vulnerable people. Vulnerable people like Leslie Wangsgaard. Leslie and her husband moved an hour and a half away to Salt Lake City to take care of Leslie's stepdad. 
when she left Logan. She became very different from what I had experienced with her, so it's like she pulled away from the Leslie that I had known. Her communication was all about what she was currently involved with, with her spiritual leader at that time, and that was the only focus she had. Leslie had suicide ideations, and that is a subject that's very, very close to Teal's heart because of her countless suicide attempts throughout her abuse. I was miserably lonely. I was so lonely that I tried to commit suicide multiple times. Those of you who know my story already know that through suicide, I figured out how to commit to life, actually. Problem is, Leslie committed suicide. And because Teal is super weird and Leslie loved her, she became everyone's favorite scapegoat. For this little exercise, I, I want you to imagine that you're dead. So we're all gonna get suicidal for a moment. The Gizmodo podcast series, The Gateway, dives into this story a great deal. It's also a gutless, milk toast excuse for journalism that transparently caters to the status quo. He plays that audio clip of Teal saying let's get suicidal five times throughout the course of the series to make sure that you are properly concerned. We're all gonna get suicidal for a moment. Are you concerned enough yet? Should we start to worry with your- And then the fence straddling fear mongering continues from there. This clip is what Teal Swan's critics point to as the most damning evidence that she pushes people to kill themselves. I actually, interestingly enough, lost my first client to suicide this last year. And this was a woman who was absolutely miserable. And so we had that very serious sit down talk where we had to say, all right, we're either committing or not committing to life. Because every time I gave her a suggestion, she'd stop in two days doing the suggestion. So then we have to ask the question, do we really want this to work? And what's interesting is when she asked herself that question, the answer was no, I'm done. So there's nothing that any healer could ever do for that type of vibration, which is totally fine. From source energy, there's nothing wrong with death from that perspective. So she chose to commit suicide. Interestingly enough, it took her about two days before she was reincarnated again. Oh yeah, that clip was everything her haters could have ever hoped for. Teal uses a lot of spiritual jargon that I don't get. Do you really not know what reincarnation is? But saying that there's nothing a healer could ever do for that type of vibration? What does she mean by that? She means the only person who is responsible for a suicide is the person who committed suicide. Happy to answer your question, that I'm sure was an actual question and not just a rhetorical segue. If she said she did have the power to spin a suicidal person around, would that mean she's less full of shit to you? Or are you gonna give her the crooked eye no matter what she says? Because publicly validating a mental health deviant doesn't do any favors for your journalism career. Based on the series, it's safe to say she made mistakes with Leslie. I mean, specifically sounds like she was way too impatient. She needed to be present. She needed to listen instead of pushing those suggestions down her throat. But it's one of those clips where people are going to hear what they want to hear. To me, it clearly sounds like the fact that her first client committed suicide is humiliating. So she was trying to sound as confident as possible, which came across as insensitive. But on paper, presence is her approach. I validate where they are. That's what other people won't do. Like the approach that everyone else takes is, let me tell you why you're wrong for feeling this way. My approach is, no, it's right to feel that way. But it doesn't look like she made Leslie feel like it was okay to feel that way. She may have been pushy, invasive, defensive. And Leslie was not ready to go where Teal was trying to take her. So ironically, maybe Teal should have said, it's right that you feel like killing yourself. I know how it sounds. I certainly know how Jennings is making it sound, but I'm telling you, she was genuinely trying to help that woman. Did it occur to anyone that maybe Teal might have a feeling or two about losing her first client to suicide? She was really, I mean, suicidally depressive. And no matter what I would say, she would never actually apply it. And what I wasn't really understanding at that time is what she needed was 100% presence, which was not something I could actually give her. Oh, so the lesson I just said that she needed to learn from that, she learned it. And it was, it was the first real big blow in my career life. The first time a spiritual teacher loses a client, you're like, oh my God, like, am, should I even be doing this? I went to kind of a crisis. I was crying for three days. I was really close to this woman. How about that? Teal had a totally reasonable human reaction to that event. Meanwhile, dipshit do right over here keeps fortifying his image as a journalist and trampling all over Teal's image as a spiritual teacher whenever he deems necessary to do so. She's been saying controversial things about death since the very beginning. If he suspects that his audience might think that something is creepy, he won't outright say he also thinks it's creepy. That would be too committal, might offend somebody. So he'll just paint an ominous cloud of suspicion wherever he wants. That's why it feels so fantastic to die. Teal just told the audience it feels fantastic to die. She says death is an immediate relief. First of all, she is not the first spiritual teacher to describe death that way, and she will not be the last. I work with people that are dying. What should I tell them? He said it's like taking off a tight shoe. Dying is like taking off a tight shoe. I highly doubt that she was encouraging suicide. A lot more likely she was trying to combat fear of death. And at the time, I bet she was a lot more focused on telling them the truth 
than saying something that would sound good if it was edited into something out of context in a decade. You guys, this really isn't that complicated. The powers that be, God, Source, whatever you want to call it, does not stand in opposition to death. That's not crazy, that's common sense. Remember Lion King? The circle of life? Everything alive dies. Everything in form is temporary. Death is not seen as a loss, and death is not seen as annihilation by your eternal self, because it knows that it is a eternal stream which is always flowing into life. And if you believe that a person owns their own body, then it's within their right to check out early. That does not imply some sort of endorsement. We also have the right to gouge our own eyes out. I certainly would not recommend that either. So from Teal's perspective, she's like this badass rebel who's willing to say things that other people aren't willing to say. I'm one of the only people who's got the balls enough to talk about it directly. Most spiritual teachers are too scared to do this. Most psychologists are too scared to do this. All they do is refer people to the hospitals or do the suicide helpline, which does nothing. She was clearly being emotional and defensive here. She could probably already feel that Jennings was not her friend. But what she's calling too scared here, the media's gonna call that too responsible and for good reason, but we'll circle back to that. So my willingness to be like, no, we're gonna actually go into it. We're gonna look at the pain. We're gonna take it as something that needs to be faced. It is your life. You get to make a choice. Let's look at that choice. And because Jennings is a twat waffle, he often presents something that Teal said, but he doesn't actually challenge it until he's in the studio, when she's not there to defend herself. All they do is refer people to the hospitals or do the suicide helpline, which does nothing. So psychiatric hospitals and the suicide prevention lifeline do help a lot of people. Thanks for that, Jennings. And when Teal is saying that the lifeline doesn't work, it concerned me that she's discouraging people from calling them. She stated her opinion, just that it does nothing. It's also a clearly hyperbolic opinion. If Teal ever discouraged someone from differing from her divine opinion, she would be going against her own teachings. Nothing she says suggests that you should only listen to Teal Swan. She wants people to feel empowered to make up their own minds. I would assume that if you're even listening to my material, you're looking for a life change. But because it's not a requirement in any way, any life changes you make is entirely left up to you, the individual. It's not my wish for people to adopt absolutely everything that I say is their gospel. Then we've just created another religion. In my ideal scenario, people would be creating a cocktail of what works for them individually. But you just had to throw her under the bus to make your segue work, didn't you, Jennings? I'm the only person in the field that needs security detail. Teal isn't right about the fact that other gurus don't need security detail. Jennings, what the fuck is your problem? Who hurt you? Based on the available information, it just does not look anything like Leslie killed herself because of Teal's teachings. Looks a lot more like Leslie may have killed herself because she ignored Teal's teachings. I'm just connecting the dots. And implying that Leslie's death was Teal's failure, no matter how vague and indirect you think you're being, is cruel. And tell me, Jennings, when you first saw this ominous Jesus meets Jim Jones photo, did it physically give you a hard-on, or did it make you feel kind of funny inside? But at least he tried to do some due diligence. Her YouTube critics are just opportunistic trash. And it looks like they don't like her because they tried her techniques and they didn't work. So let's go back to this ninny hammer with the world's most punchable face. Based on the amount of videos that this man has about Teal Swan, I was sure I was gonna find out that she killed his dog or something. I mean, look at all of this. His beef with Teal must be really serious, right? According to his video, I gotta read this title. How the cult changed me, my cult journey with pictures, how I ended up in the Teal Swan cult. This is how the cult changed him. So, you be the judge. I became really adept at explaining my feelings through these stories about my shadows. And I repurposed a lot of the painful experiences in my life so that they fit into the narrative which I constructed for myself as a tealer, which meant creating this story of my self before overcoming these shadows as a villain in some ways. My pre-teal self was this unaware, unconscious, evil person in a way. I, I just feel like it's bad advice and it really had a negative effect on me. Yeah, here's the thing though, that is a textbook example of the polar opposite of what Teal teaches, which I will break down for you presently. I repurposed a lot of the painful experiences in my life so that they fit into the narrative which I constructed for myself as a Tealer. So you constructed an inauthentic self to increase your connection within a social group. Whatever did that lead to? My pre-Teal self almost was a villain. My pre-Teal self was this unaware, unconscious, evil person in a way. Denying, rejecting, and disowning a part of your authentic truth which inevitably leads to fragmentation and then pain. Before you make a career for yourself dragging this woman, did you watch at least one of the dozens of videos where Teal addresses that exact problem? Even though we have one body, we have multiple selves within that body. Consciousness can split like water. 
we basically identify with the personalities that kept us safe and suppress, deny, reject, and disown any of the aspects of us that didn't keep us safe, that hold our vulnerability. We push those parts of ourselves away. The emotion of shame is telling you that internal fragmentation is occurring within you. This is the primary unconscious coping mechanism within people, and these cells are fragmented. Internal aspects often oppose one another. When they oppose one another, you end up with internal resistance. These are thoughts, words, and actions that oppose your highest good. Any form of resistance causes us to be torn in half. It's basically the internalized antagonist, and it takes over the job of hating those parts within the self. It obviously leads to a state of pain. We cannot move forward as one whole being. Our degree of internal suffering is about the degree of harmony or lack thereof between these internal selves. Well, that's awkward. Andy, you fragmented out your pre-teal identity and let your tealer identity bully your pre-teal identity. And that internal conflict is what caused you pain. Teal would have suggested that you unconditionally love your pre-teal self. And we're not done with Andy yet. He misrepresents her point of view over and over. So let's embarrass him again. At no point does Teal make any real substantial allowance for the idea of an objective truth. She doesn't recognize the validity of the scientific method. She treats all truth as subjective and changing. And this is because as far as I understand it in her teachings, she doesn't distinguish between subjective and objective truth. Yeah, guess what I'm about to cut to. Absolute truth is something that is true in all places at all times. It is something that is fixed. It is unchangeable and defined. A good example is there are no round squares. What do you think, guys? Does that sound subjective and changing to you? Andy, there is an objective reality, but our experience of that objective reality is inescapably imperfect because it is getting filtered through our brain into our subjective consciousness. Teal is not a physicist. She is a spiritual teacher. Her area of expertise is consciousness, which is subjective. So she just doesn't concern herself with absolute reality very much. And she said so specifically on YouTube months before your video came out. I first have to say that there is no possible way for me to do justice to the subject of reality or truth in the amount of time I have in any of these episodes. It's highly unlikely that an organism is going to grasp the concept that reality is beyond what it can perceive. Sorry, Teal. Andy knows everything. So what do you think, guys? Did I change the title of the video to Tealer Destroys Atheist? <laughs> Fucking prick. So yeah, Andy is a trash bag. He knows stuff about cults and brainwashing, but you can get that same information from a book written by a smarter person who doesn't feel the need to piss on an abused woman's career. Andy, I used to be you. So afraid of being manipulated or swindled that when we see something suspect, we must shut it down immediately. But a vital part of science is acknowledging that there are things beyond what we currently know. And a vital part of being a human being is not being a heartless asshole. Stamping the word cult next to Teal Swan every chance you get for your SEO is short-sighted and unkind. Way to put on display for the whole goddamn world, I care more about being right than I do about being compassionate. Never ever date me. I will tell you that the most painful thing that a human being could say to somebody who came through a cult experience is that they're leading a cult. It's my least favorite thing that people say about me. It destroys me. So take your own advice, Andy. Please just be decent. I will do my best. I'll tell you one thing I agree with Teal haters about. Her ego is utterly out of control. She is constantly in her own way with this grandiose veneration of her own damn self. Even when I liked her quotes, I would never share them because they look like this. For someone trying to teach us that she's one with us, she sure does like to look better than us. I am a personal transformation revolutionary. You sound like a dick. By putting herself on this pedestal, she is right up the asshole of her own separateness. I am going to posit that her attachment to her own appearance and reputation, in other words, her ego, is the shadow she's working on. Given my career, you can see that I've identified with the aspect of myself that's a knower and a teacher, worldwide. Perhaps this aspect of me that understands everything was created to cope with a blindsiding trauma that I didn't understand. Blindsiding trauma like being pulled off a huffy bike at age six only to be raped, tortured, and brainwashed for the following 13 years? Perhaps within me, therefore, is an aspect, an inner child self even, that is terrified and confused and that quite literally just does not understand what is happening. And that inner child is trying to protect itself by separating from people, by standing on a stage, by claiming she has gifts that the rest of us don't. By talking to people like she knows them better than they do. She speaks as if she knows what the universe can and can't worry about. So she's subtly made herself an authority because she has a direct 
connection to the universe. Sometimes she would remind me that she knows infinitely more than I do, even about myself. To put it bluntly, everything people don't like about her are times she opposes her own teachings. So Teal, let me ask you. Saying you're part alien. Is that distancing or is that bringing someone closer? Saying you have magic powers. Is that distancing or is that bringing someone closer? Constantly saying things that people find either weird or scary. Is that distancing or is that bringing someone closer? The aspect of her self-glorifying separation that is the most problematic, and many people say dangerous, is the separation between her and mainstream medicine. Her solutions are not corroborated by peer-reviewed research or clinical trials. And even if she doesn't think that's a problem, it's a problem, which places her in a state of resistance to what is. She does not have any formal education in mental health counseling. Teal isn't a trained mental health practitioner. She talks about mental health in a way that people might not be used to. When she was challenged about her educational level, she said that if you went back in time and sat at the foot of Albert Einstein, would you ask him for his credentials? Teal's point is that intelligence exists outside of the need for validation by some sort of socially approved credential system. But it's a really creepy point. She's letting her own distrust of the man blind her to love and oneness, which is reality. And is that distancing or bringing someone closer? Credentials are a tool that we as a society use to discern the quality of information. At the current stage of human consciousness, especially considering the dire consequences of misinformation on the internet, we need to work with that instead of against it. I'm suggesting she ought to follow her own advice, which happens a lot in this video. I want you to imagine a stream, and in this stream that has a very fast-moving current, there is a boat. Inside of this boat, you have six oarsmen. Three of these oarsmen are faced downstream paddling with the current. Three of these oarsmen are faced in the opposite direction, paddling upstream against the current. The oarsmen that are paddling upstream against the current, in a land called what you want is downstream, are in resistance. Resistance is nothing more than oppositional force. Dismissing the validity of accreditation, while claiming you can see people's stomach contents mid-digestion, that is one hard paddle upstream, Teal. I mean, have you ever noticed that the mainstream is called the mainstream? No matter how hard she tries to protect that inner child and stay separate, the reality is that in today's world, people need substantiation to trust her material. This is the reality right now. And if she continues to deny that, then she knows what reality tends to do. It proves it exists. In the Gizmodo podcast, she indicates that they were intending clinical trials for the completion process. I would love to know what came of that. But have you, like, test these? Like, any sort of clinical trials? Yeah, any... We're in the middle of it. What do you mean? We're literally in the process of setting up an entire clinical trial around the completion process. How does... I, with you... a psychiatrist who agrees with me. So, Teal caught me off guard with that one. Jennings wasn't ready for her to say something that he couldn't fit all neat and tidy in his dangerous wacko box. How dare. Boy, it's crazy. Put him in one of them crazy buckets. She told me she wanted to go through clinical trials so that it can be used in psychiatric wards and by places that take insurance. In order to do that, she needs to work with a psychiatrist. What happened to this? Did she ever do the trials? I need to know. She needs mainstream support. In some capacity, if she wants to reach thousands of people, potentially suicidal people, or she's gonna keep manifesting trouble for herself. And believe it or not, I don't think it's impossible. The stuff she talks about that I understand is not insane. But she doesn't cite any sources, much less any science-based sources. And even if she uses an established concept that has some backing, she renames it, thusly obscuring its validity. Somehow it looks like she makes stuff up and rips stuff off. I said, do you realize that parts work is not Teal's creation? Like, this is something that I've studied in NLP, and this has been around for way longer than Teal's even existed. There's something called structural dissociation of the personality. It's a theory in psychology and it talks about the same thing it's people who have when you've been through trauma and you dissociate your mind kind of splits in a way into different parts so that you can make peace with certain situations jess you seem like a nice person and i'm really sorry that that anthropomorphic weasel got you involved in this but teal knows she didn't invent parts work nobody owns the copyright to working with fragments of consciousness she recognizes all sorts of interpretations and spins on the concept and lists them in her video titled parts work. You have internal family systems, gestalt, inner shamanic journey work, 
Freudian psychology, art therapy, play therapy, acting schools, Jungian psychology, inner child work, ego state theory, voice dialogue, and the list goes on and on. You see, this is why I turned away from atheism. To most atheists, nothing is real until its existence is validated by a particular group of people even if it's something that they experience firsthand. So they actually pride themselves on allowing people with PhDs to gaslight them. PhD are not their people, not gods, trust yourself. Spirituality addresses our need to fortify our inner world before engaging with our outer world. And facts and figures and diagnosis and scientific interpretations of reality count as outer world. It's too much to ask us to deny, reject, and disown our own experiences until science catches up and can validate it. There are things that exist that science does not understand yet. Deal with it. Because spiritual practice involves the formless, consciousness is formless, and therefore can't be measured, can't be observed can't be approved of via the scientific method. They'll say Teal's approach to parts work and any other spiritual approaches are obviously bullshit, even if thousands of people say that they aren't. But when academics put the label of structural dissociation of reality on the exact same thing and include it in Jess's NLP studies, then it gets to be a real thing. I can play that game. What other Teal Swan concepts have science approved labels? The shadow is just the subconscious, but that's too obvious. I've got a better one. How about the absolutely insane idea of the law of attraction? Our consciousness somehow directly affects our reality as if. John Archibald Wheeler devised an experiment that established that observation alone can indeed change the way particles behave. He advocated what he called genesis and observership, and said we are shapers and creators living in a participatory universe, not insignificant bystanders. So I guess you could say that she rips off science, or you could say things exist regardless of who names them. I named my dog Potato. I don't think I invented dogs. In fact, if you look at most science-based criticisms of Teal Swan's material, as opposed to all of the criticisms of her personally, it's usually a discrepancy over labels. She also said that a person cannot suffer new trauma after the age of eight. When somebody thinks they're traumatized after this age, it's just a reflection of a prior wound. So here she's just flat out wrong, as she is pretty much most of the time. I would bet money that if you put these two individuals in a room, they have different definitions of the words trauma and reflection. But I want to point out what's going on in this clip energetically, if you guys can handle that word for a second. <laughs> Dr. Grande got snotty with Teal because she invalidated a system that he and thousands of other individuals triumph over every day to earn the respect that she's expecting to get just cause. So why should I go to you? Because I feel like I have the answer. She invalidated modern medicine in order to validate herself. And Dr. Grande, as a representative of modern medicine, invalidated her right back. Which is the pathetic, meat space, ego competition. Not oneness, not love, not what Teal teaches. But she keeps thinking she doesn't have to confront this mainstream medicine issue. And she can just do her thing in the background, without their approval. But because... We live in a time-space reality that's based on the law of attraction, which is easily rewritten as the law of mirroring. She greets her mirror in mainstream medicine. The harder she pushes against them, the harder they push back. If all you have in your internal reality is lots and lots of separation, what's mirroring in your external reality? Lots and lots of separation. Here's an example of Teal's inner conflict, pretty directly creating an outer conflict. If you don't get what resistance is yet, it's the feeling of tension you have in your chest listening to this. It is painful. Empaths, you have been warned. But, but how do I know that you are able to determine who has the capacity for that? The way he says you there, if she wasn't already possessed by her vain aspect, she is now. What are you the best at? It's like my best skill. I hope it's writing. How do I know that you're a good judge of writing? I mean, you don't have to, but if I have a really shitty blog post, it's not someone's life on the line. If you were grieving because you lost someone you love, would you rather talk to somebody who learned about it at school or somebody who had actually gone through it? I feel like it'd, it'd probably be easier to connect with somebody who is who has been through something. But that doesn't mean that they're necessarily qualified to help me get through that. Why am I qualified? Yeah. Because I did try to commit suicide multiple times and have been suicidal for the majority of my life. And I know exactly how to talk myself down off a fucking ledge. Well, that works for you. But how? It works that... for everybody, unless they really don't want to be here. Teal. Wrong answer. If somebody asks you, why should people follow you? The answer is, I don't know. Ask them.
Jennings, people should go to Teal if her methods make sense to them. She has plenty of happy, not dead clients who can vouch for her. They just aren't scary and interesting enough to get Gizmodo the traffic they want. Her butt cheeks clenched up when you asked that question because her entire childhood was riddled with dehumanizing abuse that she copes with by sharing the lessons she learned from her abuse with people who are suffering, giving 13 years of horrific treatment purpose. So putting her in the position where she had to defend that was probably pretty painful. I'm not even suggesting it wasn't a fair question. It is a fair question. I'm just saying that Jennings just seems completely cut off from Teal as a human being with emotions. Her consciousness might totally grasp unconditional love. But her brain is going to be catching up slowly over many, many years. So she will have a weak moment from time to time. So let's listen to this shit eater weekly imply she's a supervillain again. She knows that using buzzwords and clickbait topics will bring in viewers. Because when people are distressed, they don't know what to look for. They're just googling, I'm alone, or why does this hurt so much? And those words might lead them to a teal swan video about grief. And that video can lead them down a teal swan rabbit hole. Because she's pumping out new content and life updates constantly on social media. This strategy is working for teal. She has good SEO. It's all intentional. She intentionally markets her own shit. Someone call the fucking cops. I specifically try to go for tags and things like that get to capture that audience. Mm -hmm. When you're in a desperate state, it's, you're not, it's not sophisticated. People like when they're in that state, they type in shit like, I just lost my mother, what the fuck do I do? Right. Literally, that will be the Google tagline. She's a vlogger. She tags her shit. This is boring. What are you exposing? But a lot of them found Teal at a particular point in their lives. When they were isolated and in pain and spending a lot of time online. Maybe they've tried other therapies or pills or maybe they don't want therapy. But they're searching for answers and Teal has them. A lot of people found a Walmart at a particular time in their lives when they were isolated in brokenness. Spending a lot of time looking for online coupons. Maybe they've tried Target but they're looking for savings and Walmart has them. It's like he thinks his journalism career will spontaneously combust if he even entertains the possibility that she's honest. Most of Teal's followers are alive and happier because we listen to her. Where's their podcast series, my dude? There are hundreds of videos and posts where people are saying they want to kill themselves. And I see the value of having this kind of immediate support, but it's still jarring to me. Why are all these people in pain trying something I don't understand instead of something that I do understand? Jarring indeed. Jennings is implying that Teal is a bad actor in the surveillance capitalism landscape. Spreading bullshit to lure people into her nefarious scheme. Here's the thing, though. Teal targets people in pain to lead them to videos that could, and often do, alleviate their pain. None of her content rallies people to do anything. Members of Teal Tribe are not preoccupied at all with bringing in new members. If anything, they're a little bit distrustful of doing so. <laughs> what they're preoccupied with is their own healing. And a flip to the personal side, surveillance capitalism is a huge deal for me. I watched The Social Dilemma like 10 times. It was a security blanket for a little while because it made me feel like the problem was getting dealt with. I have read Jaren Lanier and Shoshana Zuboff. This is an issue that I am passionate about. But bad actors in this system, they don't lure people in to give them comfort. They lure people in to make them even more frightened. Teal is not doing that. You guys are. Teal does not talk shit about people on her channel. She gives examples to make her points constantly, but they are always hypothetical people. She doesn't even use celebrities, and Lord knows that would help her SEO. And she would never devote a series to dragging someone. For example, Teal would never say, Jennings Brown is a smug, self-important snot goblin who can suck a bag of dicks. He's a journalist, he can take it. But maybe Andy can't. Ooh, I didn't think about that. But Andy is so fun to make fun of. He's so fun. But seriously, Andy, you can let me know in private and I will stop. And I won't screen grab it and tell anybody. But until then. <laughs> Jennings, if you want to go after the true surveillance capitalism villains, go after the people organizing riots and genocide. Not this one woman who maybe sort of, kind of, was indirectly involved with one woman's suicide. Christ. I could go on and on about this podcast series, but it would weigh down this video. But if you want me to talk about anything else from the podcast series, let me know. Anyway, let's figure out if she's a total bitch or not. Cameron Clark was living with Teal at one stage, and she left because there was a whole range of issues that happened. There's four people in a little room. She had them surround me, and she's sitting there berating me for all of my shortcomings, telling me that, that I don't trust her, that I sent an energetic dagger by saying that, and that I'm questioning her integrity. I figured people were gonna want me to spill the tea on Cameron. But this is gossip. The only people who know what happened are the people who were there. But I can tell you what it sounds like. It sounds like Teal was being impatient again, just like she was with Leslie. And Cameron and Leslie were in Teal's life at the same time. This was 2012. Cameron, this woman who turned on me, was 
actually in the house at that time. She watched me just flip out over it. So typical Teal, she separated herself in that bubble of superiority and made that mistake with the wrong person. And Cameron's ego went into the best defense is a good offense mode and started, honestly, shooting negative energy daggers Teal's way. And she said, well, what if I told you you're passively suicidal instead? And I was like, I don't even know what that means. And she said, well, I can see your thoughts and I can see your vibrations and I can see everything about you. And I know that you're a match to breast cancer and you have stomach ulcers. And she's just going on and on and on about how toxic of a person I am. Damn, I'm gonna need a lamp for all that shade. So yeah, I think that Teal attracted this conflict the way she attracts a lot of her conflicts, with the vain shadow aspect. But I think Cameron is otherwise insignificant. Teal was abused in broad daylight for 13 years, right under her parents' nose. It would be weird if she wasn't a crazy bitch sometimes, at least for a while. Her brain was formed, normalizing horrific treatment. She probably sabotaged a lot in life because she couldn't relate to why anyone would be nice to her. I sabotaged a lot in my life based on not feeling like I could relate to why people were being nice to me. How the fuck about that? But that was until she met Blake. When Teal was 19, before she was really considering being a spiritual leader, she moved out of her parents' house. She moved in with a guy named Blake. Blake is a precious marshmallow that must be protected at all costs. Teal and I were in a relationship for a year. The intensity of that year, I'd come home and, and she'd cut up on her arms, all up and down and bleeding in the bathtub. And I had never seen anything like that before. I was in shock. And at the same time, just trying to be there for this person, no one had really stayed for her or been there. Unconditionally loving. And I just wanted to be that. Aww, this is so cute. I could never figure out Blake. It was really confusing to me. I, I'll be honest, I just didn't understand. I felt guilty. I didn't understand why somebody was treating me that nicely. I didn't understand how somebody could value me as a person. Listen guys, when you are love starved, you become a monster. You're voraciously hunting for acceptance, while you are also, tragically, explosively defensive. It is a volatile state of mind. The need to defend yourself and the need to be with love are contradictory in terms. Defense is fear. Love is the opposite direction. So, what happens to a person if they have two contradictory aspects that need to coexist? Consciousness can split like water. We have multiple selves. When they oppose one another, you end up with internal resistance. Resistance causes us to be torn in half. It obviously leads to a state of pain. Our degree of internal suffering is about the degree of harmony or lack thereof between these internal selves. So what is the verdict? Is Teal innocent or guilty? I say... Guilty. Guilty of the crime of being weird and scary. She says she can see the future. Yeah, very weird. But she makes death sound like a good thing. Yes, very scary. She says her paintings can do stuff like cause changes in belief patterns. Pretty weird and kind of scary. One of her clients committed suicide. Scary indeed. She's running around claiming to heal people with no credentials. Yeah, significantly scary. But proudly shitting on a woman for being weird and scary? Hmm. But she's a witch! Yeah. When did we become fucking Puritans? I thought the lesson that we were supposed to learn from the Salem witch trials and movies like The Iron Giant and E.T. was to stop attacking and damning people for being weird and scary. Post-production overdub here. Because the video never really wrapped up my point of view or my beliefs in relation to the stuff Teal says, here it is. I think Teal Swan was really brutally abused and brainwashed for 13 years. And all the research that's been done to try to prove otherwise is at best inconclusive and at worst offensive and cruel. I think she started her career and her public persona before she had shaken off all the goofy beliefs that originated with the brainwashing. What aspects are goofy and what aspects are legit? I don't have a fucking clue. And I don't think any of you do either. I don't have any opinions about extraterrestrials, extrasensory abilities, or reincarnation. And my understanding of the law of attraction is hazy at best. All of those are square in the fuck if I know category. And I'll engage those concepts as they become relevant to my experience. But regardless, I think the public reactions to her goofy statements are hilariously out of proportion. As the great poet Taylor Swift once said, you need to calm down. So why do I think these things? Why am I so confident about my opinion of Teal Swan? Because I have personally experienced long-term abuse that occurred alongside a life that looked perfectly normal to the outside world. So I know how your life turns into a gaslighting nightmare and everybody from your past seems to think you're full of shit. Because I have personally experienced hitting a point of loneliness so deep that the following reality is earth shattering. We all live in parallel universes, separated from one another by our consciousness. 
and nobody else will ever be able to verify or validate my story or my reality. When you dive into loneliness, what you're seeing in the world actually is the fact that we live in these parallel realities. And it was so painful of a realization. But when I really looked at the world and I realized that I could be standing in the same room with another person living in a completely different perceptual reality than them, I had a very hard time digesting that truth. And just like her, when I hit that low, I found my connection to oneness, where true belonging is, that no one can take away from you. And I've felt at peace with the world and the universe and my own death ever since. I don't even give a fuck if I'm wrong at this point. <laughs> and because I have experienced all of that firsthand, I've personally witnessed every beat of that journey. And Teal's story lines up with every single beat. Ergo, I think the completion process should be approached with respect. Even if you don't agree with it. I know that's tough considering the wall between Teal and the mainstreamers, but I think both sides would really benefit from tearing that wall down. We all exist in the same universe. Oneness is the reality. I don't expect people to walk away from this video believing Teal Swan's interpretation of the universe is accurate, but I'm not afraid to admit. I do want to sell them on the idea that she's a human being with feelings trying to do good in the world and awkwardly fumbling through pain in public to do it. And that's pretty brave. I've even got a few Facebook posts from people asking about Teal, like asking to find out her darker side or her evil side or the stuff that people don't know about. But as far as I can see, she has done nothing to intentionally harm anyone. And she has hidden nothing. She's been ridiculously forthcoming about everything. There's nothing really to tell that she doesn't expose herself. What she's doing is what she feels and what she sees and what she knows in her heart. There is no conspiracy. I certainly can't say she's never lied, but I firmly believe anytime she did lie, she did it for emotional self-defense. Not to con people. Fucking comment on the kiss motive. Oh my God. What's your fucking problem? <laughs> she does not benefit from her clients committing suicide. She does not benefit from giving advice to people that doesn't work. All that drama is gonna do for her is attract shit like this douche nozzle. She has made a lot of grand scale mistakes. But as far as I can see, the only person that they have directly harmed is Teal Swan. And that's my stake in this. I am also healing fragmentation caused by abuse. I know what it feels like to have to hold contradictory aspects to survive. And Teal helped me conceptualize that fear and trauma in a way that I could finally process it after 30 years of underwhelming therapists and just the constant hum of suffering. I used to describe it as a rock sitting in my chest. That is now gone. I suspect people are gonna say that I'm projecting my own shit, but how about this? How about I'm focused on mine and Teal's sameness instead of what makes us different? Triggering my empathy for another human being. Instead of pushing her away with fear and distrust. There are a lot of things that she has said that made perfect sense to me. But this clip, this all could easily have come out of my own mouth. And the real reason I'm not talking to my parents right now is not because of what happened. I could forgive them any day for what happened before. I could, like today. If they walked through the door and said, you know, we're going to acknowledge that all of the stuff that you say happened, happened, let's find healing. I'd be like, fine, I'll let them off the hook immediately for everything, you know. But what's, the reality is that I don't talk to them because of the fact that there's a rift between what they're willing to accept happened to me and what they are unwilling to own up to, basically, about the past. And that's happening in real time. Yeah, pretty much. I know that feel, girl. And as I approach this story from the perspective of sameness, I have a theory about the extrasensory powers. I'm about to lose fans on both sides of this. This is pure speculation. I would never claim to know something about this. I just want you guys to recognize it as a possibility. So you have a shadow of a doubt before you burn her at the stake. Teal has said how painful it was to grasp the reality that her abuser didn't actually love her, and he wasn't training her for anything, that he was just a sadistic fuck. It took me three years in therapy to admit that this man, that he might not love me, that the reason that he did all the things he said he did might just be because he likes to hurt people. Facing your shadow, the aspects that you have pushed into your subconscious, it is extremely painful. It is pain that is so severe that most people spend their entire lives avoiding it. Not realizing that a life of constant fragmentation is far more painful. That's why it took Teal three years to face that one thing. It was probably agonizing. It was probably the worst experience of my entire life, I have to say. Like, I would love to say it was so beautiful, it felt so good. No, it was awful. It was absolutely awful. And I have I said a few times in the beginning that I don't know, really, whether recovery has you know been worth that experience. 
She has also said explicitly that her extrasensory abilities were the primary reason that she was zeroed in on for this abuse in the first place. My parents, they were really scientific, not even religious people. To have this kid with all these interesting abilities was like, whoa, we don't know what to do with this. I've got this whole thing going on. My parents are just like, this is over our head, like way over our head. So this guy came in and he's like, it's not over my head. I actually know what to do about this. It's really important to understand that because it's the real basis for why I was brought in. And then he infiltrated the family as my mentor and ended up pulling me into this nightmare of a world of religious cults and of his own abuse. So I imagine through her abuse, the only thing that got her through it was the belief that she was special. That there was some sort of purpose for all of it. But most importantly, she had to believe that this suffering had to happen to her. Couldn't be anyone else but her. Why would somebody in your mind as a young kid when you don't know about pedophiles and you don't know about cults? My thinking was like, why, why else would it be happening? So doesn't it follow that she may have attached to the belief that she has extrasensory abilities? The same way she once attached herself to the belief that her torture was rooted in love? Because if her abuser didn't love her, and she didn't have any extrasensory abilities, and she's not a personal transformation revolutionary, if she really is just one of us, a whole bunch of crazy shit happened to her for no reason. That seems a lot more likely to me than that she has powers or is lying. Part of me felt like there has to be a reason that people go through what they go through. And what I went through must have some kind of grandmaster plan behind it. After all, there's so much synchronicity in the world. Synchronicity builds a kind of hope. So to me, I think it was the potential that maybe there is a greater reason why these kinds of things are happening. I think her abuse left a big gaping hole in her heart, which sparked an insatiable hunger for purpose. And she found that purpose in sharing the strategies to heal that worked for her. And the belief that she is special. Maybe she hasn't processed that little girl that needs to believe. Because doing so would A, be insanely painful, on top of all the rest of the pain she has already experienced. I couldn't handle my past, I couldn't handle my life, so I went home that day. I tried to hang myself, so I just, it's like, fuck, I mean, even today it's so hard to think about it again, so it's just... I just don't know sometimes, still, like, how to keep going forward with some of those memories. B. Possibly dismantle everything she has built. Everything she's worked for. That's one hell of a fragmentation she's got there. She would have to choose between being this teacher of oneness and being a part of the oneness, which is reality, and would be the only thing that would actually heal her loneliness. If she decides to drop the magical teal swan facade and be one with the lowly rest of us, that definitely doesn't mean that the public will just forgive her and embrace her right back. They'll probably just hashtag cancel Teal Swan. And unevolved twits like Jennings and Andy will just have a field day. Maybe not Jennings, but definitely Andy. Almost worth not doing it because it would make Andy too happy. Because in current times, it is perfectly acceptable to run on fear 100%, which is the polar opposite of love, if the person is weird and scary enough. Look at how society turned on Liam Neeson for having a violent racist thought once. And she might be seeing her reflection in us, but we are seeing our reflection in her right back. We are getting the only incarnation of Teal Swan that we could possibly accept right now. We don't understand the concept of a teacher that's not in a place of superiority. That's not how we organize society. Which is ridiculous because even in the Bible, when Jesus washed the disciples' feet and encouraged them to wash each other's feet, the foot washing thing. A servant is not greater than his master, nor is a messenger greater than the one who sent him. A spiritual teacher shouldn't put themselves above other people. Because spiritually speaking, no mortal is better than another. Teal's gotta wash some feet. But her ego is screaming, we must exist, we must exist, that motherfucker wouldn't let us exist for 13 years. Fuck anyone who challenges our validity. Especially those goddamn doctors. The psychiatrist who agrees with me. That oneness that she's resisting also includes Dr. Grande and this twat waffle and this shit flinging gibbon. If she doesn't stop resisting the reality of the medical field as it is right now, and if she doesn't stop hardening the boundary of Teal Swan, she'll never finish healing. The reality is that this is what is right now. We have to accept what is before we do anything else. So swallow what is so, so that you can refocus all of your energy on what to do now. And she's been healing in public, in a world that sees people as static, monolithic characters. 
not the unfathomably complex and constantly changing entities that we are. I am the most complicated person you'll ever meet. Like, you can think of me as a miniature universe. To be fair, she may have already figured all of this out and isn't saying anything for obvious reasons. All of her recent videos seem to be reasonably sane. Actually, if somebody can find the most recent time that she said something really insane, I am curious. But in the past, without guidance from a real mentor, she was unchecked and flew too close to the sun. I really actually regret in my own career stepping out with the truth about my childhood. Instead of the focus being on my content, let's look at what she did to heal. The emphasis went straight to me as a person. Whether I'm telling the truth or whether I'm lying, the content that I was sharing was lost. I started off my career thinking by sharing the truth about my past, people would see that as a credential for why to listen to this person. What I was totally naive to at the time was how that was going to be received. We want to have a certain belief about how the world works and when something challenges that for us, it challenges our entire reality. When people listen to these things, they're not ready to accept it as reality. People are not ready to talk about extraterrestrials. People are not ready to talk about uh, details of reincarnation. Nor does it really matter. What matters is the content, but I was not prepared for how unready people would be for that. When you start a career like I've started, you always make mistakes. Had I done my career over again, I'm not really sure I would have talked about it. So if she doesn't right now, she needs somebody older and wiser to keep her in check. And that's not an insult. We all need that. I know I need that. Teal and I both had parents that failed us. And that is a missing fundamental piece to the human psyche. And everybody seems to forget how young Teal is. She's 36, that's two years older than me. It's my sister's age. I know you're thinking, ah, oh, but that's a grown ass woman. Most spiritual teachers, known spiritual teachers are in their 70s. She's just getting started and has a lot to learn. This is a long video. Oh my God, I've been recording for two hours. Oh god, so tired. In another video I talked about axe sharpening friends versus axe forging friends. So let me do my best Teal Swan impression. An axe being forged is weak and soft, so it needs to be handled delicately. Try to sharpen it and it will fall apart. One must wait for an axe to cool and harden before attempting to sharpen it, or risk long-lasting or perhaps permanent damage to the axe. Blake is an amazing axe forging friend, and he was right there when she needed one. But she needs a little sharpening now. She needs to engage that egotistical shadow. But she needs to be surrounded by support and unconditional love while she does it, because it's gonna be a bitch. She doesn't need her defensive ego mirrored back to her anymore. With all this controversy and conflict. And if this video happens to cross her path, I hope she realizes that my criticisms are coming from an axe sharpening friend. I do have one beef though. Teal, what the fuck is up with your B-cam? Years upon years and you just can't get it together. First it's like way too close and then it's the wrong focal length and then it's like a weird angle. It's just always so awkward. And now the two shots, they just look way too similar. It's just way too similar. What's up, I'm Lindsay. I'm a professional videographer whose career got bitch slapped by COVID-19. I am alarmingly available. And I've gotten the occasional gig, but for the most part, I'm living off of PPP loans and the generosity of my awesome sister. And I've just experienced a monumental life transition, so I am ripe and ready to join the cult. So what do you say? After my initiation ritual and after the naked dance under the harvest moon, we take your videos to the next level. And I actually want to talk about making infographics based on some of your more abstract concepts. I think that would really help. But seriously, to wrap this all up, Teal, I am in your corner. But if this is truly what your goal is... What I care about first and foremost is what is going to help humanity to expand. Then you must integrate that rebellious inner child that is sabotaging you and get all your oarsmen paddling downward on the mainstream. Have a good week. It's just